All right, so for this first one, most people solving number one are just going to take the square root of both sides, which is great. So if I take the square root of both sides here, square root, square root, uh, I might end up with x equals 4, but that's not entirely correct. Because when we take the square root of both sides, what do I need to remember to include? Plus yep, the plus or minus. And so it gives us both 4 and negative 4 there. Number two, here, x equals two and negative three. <coughs> when we have it in factored form set equal to zero, we're basically saying set each of the factors equal to zero and solve those from there. Okay, number three now. Number three as it's currently written wouldn't be easily solved. But if we write it like number 2 was written, then it will be. So in other words, the first thing we do is we factor it, which means looking to say what two numbers add to the middle number and multiply to the last number. So that is adds to negative 8, multiplies to 15. In this case, that's negative 3 and negative 5. So I have x minus 3 times x minus 5. Now notice I actually need to write the factored form like this. Some people jump straight from there to the x equals, skipping writing this out. And about half the time they make a mistake and forget to flip the signs or whatever. Because remember, it's what makes it equal 0. So it's actually a positive 3 and a positive 5. And then for number 4, again, a nice rule of math is that if it looks weird to you, Make it look like something that doesn't look weird to you. In other words, start by making it look like what we're used to. And in this case, if it looked like number 3, I know I could solve it. And so what do I need to do then to this one? I need to get this to be a 0. That means that I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides. And it means I'm going to subtract the 9 from both sides. I'm going to do both of those. When we do that, we end up with x squared plus 5x minus 14 equals 0. <coughs> now that it looks like this, we remember what to do. Because in order to do that one, I factored it. And so in order to do this one, I factor it. And so what two numbers add to 5, multiply to negative 14, 7 and negative 2. And if it's x plus 7, that means that x must equal a negative 7. And if it's x minus 2, that means x must equal a positive 2. And so we get x equals a negative 7 and a positive 2 there. This brings back our solving skills. Well, as you're going to see, we're going to be using that today because we're going to be now taking these more advanced solving skills that we've been learning this year, and we're going to apply them to fractions, specifically proportions today. Remember that a proportion is just a fraction set equal to a fraction. And so we're going to be solving problems that look like this, but of course you know they're going to get more complex. But we're going to start with this one, hopefully easy. So whenever we have a proportion like this, in order to solve it, this is the one where we cross multiply. And so I'm going to cross multiply like that. Now when I do that, I'm going to do the x times the 20 first. Actually, let's color code this here. There we go. The x times the 20, that gives me 20x. And then the thing to remember is that when we cross multiply, it does not get rid of the equal sign. And so it's going to be 20x equals, and now I can do the 18 times 11. And so we end up with 20x equals 198. Every now and then I'll see people cross multiply and they'll try to make it like 20x over 198. And no more equal sign or something like that. That's a bad thing if that happens. If you lose the equal sign in the middle of solving, something bad happens. So keep an eye on that as a general rule in all math and in all solving that you do. Alright, and then to finish solving this one out, we would divide both sides by the 20. And when we do that, then we end up with a final answer here of 9.9. .9. Yes, it's a decimal. That's okay. Decimals are okay. A little side note here before we go on. I just started by saying, yeah, this is where we cross multiply. Assuming that you are familiar with cross multiplying and that you understand why it works. But oftentimes that's a bit of an assumption. And so a really quick idea, 
Why does cross multiplying work? Well, the other way you could think about this is that what we're really doing is we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, so I can get rid of the denominator. So for instance, I might start by multiplying both sides by 20. Because if I do that, I know that on the left side, it didn't really make anything all that prettier, but on the right side, 11 over 20 times 20 gives me just 11. So notice multiplying by the denominator got rid of that fraction. I could then repeat the process to get rid of the 18, so I multiply both sides by 18. And if I do that, I get 20x on the left side, because again, times 18 and divide by 18 cancel each other out. And that equals 11 times 18, which is that 198. It's the same thing. It's just that the cross multiplying is saying do both multiplications at the same time. So that's all the cross multiplying is doing, is it's just giving us this one method that takes care of two steps at once. All right, now moving on. We're going to solve this one now. And so again, for this one, because it's a fraction equal to a fraction, I can go ahead and cross multiply. So I'm going to do the x times x, which gives me x squared, equals, remember the equals, the 8 times the 2. So that equals 16. Well, this looks a little familiar, right? This is that first warm-up problem we did. I take the square root of both sides, and remember the plus or minus when I take the square root. So x equals 4 and negative 4. This is going to be kind of the start of the trend that you're going to be seeing today, is because we're going to be solving proportions like this, but you're often going to have multiple answers, because we're going to have our quadratics coming back along the way too. Right, next one for us to do. All right, and so to solve this one, again, if it's a proportion, I can cross multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and do the 18 times x plus 3. Now, for the first moment here, I'm going to just write it out the long way. And I write it out as 18 times x plus 3 <coughs> equals, and then we cross multiply the other way as well, so that's going to be 15 times x plus 5. Now, why did I write it out the long way first? Because I want to emphasize to you the idea that when we multiply that 18 by x plus 3, I got to multiply 18 by both of those terms. I got to multiply it by the x and by the 3. Same thing with the 15, it has to distribute to both the x and the 5. So the cross multiplying step should give us this. 18x plus 54 equals 15x plus 75. Then we're going to go ahead and solve from here. Now, I got x's on both sides of the equation. There's no squares here or anything like that. They're just plain old x's. So that tells me to go back to the old method that you've had for years of just move the x's to one side and the numbers to the other. So, for instance, I might start by moving that 15 next to the other side. And then, at this point, I need to move the 54 out. And finally, in order to know what x is, then I would just divide by the 3 that was left behind. And so in this case, then, we can know that x equals 7. All right, so now on to this problem here. And again, we're going to start it by the same method. We're going to cross multiply. And in this case, when I go to cross multiply, though, notice I'm multiplying a binomial by a binomial. Well, again, I do like to write it out the long way. so. That would give us like x plus 1 times x minus 4, which then we multiply out to get what it looks like expanded. So this is what our first couple of lines should look like here. Write it out as x plus 1 times x minus 4, and then distribute to multiply out those parentheses. And now it looks like some of those other problems we saw in the warm-up, right? Where we have a quadratic with both x squared and x in it, this set equal to something that's not 0. Well... <laughs> First step, make it equal 0. And so that means I want to get that 14 out of there. So I subtract the 14 from both sides. And having done that, now I have a quadratic set equal to 0. That tells me to factor it. And so we can go ahead and factor it. That means saying what two numbers add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 18. It's a negative 6 and a positive 3. And so this one, again, has two solutions. We find that x equals both 6 and negative 3.
Okay, and work this one through top to bottom before you actually start checking answers. 